table, we work on different exercises from the side room. We do side arms and sideline legs, a variation from the mat repertoire on the reformer. For this video, we will be using our backs. An optional small nine inch ball yoga block, a firm pillow that can fit between your shoulder blocks to help rest your head on. Uh, for comfort, drain the sideline legs, and we're going to be using a wall or holding on to the side of a piece of furniture, or I may be using my Pilates pole for stability on the first half of the warm-up today. So, since it is difficult to see me from behind the reformer, and it's difficult to see my feet in front of the reformer, I'm going to go ahead and see them on my Cadillac for the warm-up. Everyone, please go find a wall to put your fingertips gently on. Take your pole to use for support or flip a broom upside down and use that for support as well. These are all good options. I uh, personally have decided that I'm going to hold on to the front pole of my Cadillac. I'm just using two fingers gently resting on it. I'm going to bring my feet so that they're hip width apart so that my heels are directly under my sit bones. From there, I'm going to check in with my body before I begin. I'm going to make sure that my shoulders and my hips are lined up over each other. The box of my body is square. I'm drawing my abdomen up and in, my lower abdominals. I'm drawing my belly button back towards my spine. I'm bringing my ribs together on the exhale. So I inhale, and on the exhale, I bring my ribs together as if I'm wearing a corset. My shoulders are flat down my back, my shoulders are away from my ears, and my neck is soft. Go ahead and shake out your neck. From there, we're going to be hip width apart, heels under our sits bones, fingers holding gently on to the pole, the wall, a piece of furniture. We're going to begin by rising up onto the balls of our feet, lifting our abdominals up and in, lengthening up out of our head, and then we're going to keep the box of our body stable and bend our knees. From there, we're going to lower our heels and straighten our legs. We're going to rise up onto the balls of our feet or onto releve, putting the weight between the big toe and the second toe primarily, we're going to bend our knees while our heels are still lifted, keeping that equal 11 shape with our legs that we had on the rise up, lowering our heels and straightening our legs. Let's go ahead and speed it up. Rise up, lifting up your abdominals, bending your knees, lowering your heels, straightening your legs. Rise up, bend your knees, lower your heels, straighten your legs. One more than this direction. Make sure that the box of your body is staying stable, that you're not leaning forward or back. Straighten your legs. Now we're going to reverse. So with the heels down, we're going to bend our knees, tracking them over our big toe. We're going to rise up under our heels, keeping the same distance between our knees that we have when our heels are down. Straighten our legs, and now we'll lower our heels. Bend your knees, rise the heels, straighten your legs, and lower. Squeezing your inner thighs to keep the distance equal. Let's do two more. Bend the knees. Raise the heels. Straighten the legs. And lower. Final one. Now, without moving your feet, just bring your heels together. So you're in the Pilates V position. Your heels are together. Your toes are apart. You can feel all ten toes on the mat. You're squeezing your glutes, you're tweezing your seat, squeezing your inner thighs, drawing your abdominals up and in. Ribs are still knit, shoulders down your back, raise up on your heels for the balls of your feet, and lower your heels, and raise your heels, and lower. Exhale, lift, and lower, and inhale. Squeezing. Squeeze to lift and lower. There's seven and eight and nine 
any 10. Go ahead and separate your feet so that they're parallel again. Your hips are directly, or your uh, sits bones are directly over your heels. Let go of whatever you're holding on to. I like to bring my arms out to a T, slightly forward in my periphery, palms facing down, or elbows slightly bent, hands facing in, in a ballet second position. We are going to rise up onto the balls of our feet, bend our knees, lower our heels, and straighten our legs. Rise up, lifting your abdominals up and in, bending your knees over your big toe, lower your heels, straighten your legs. Here's three, bend the knees, lower the heels, rise up, here's four, bend the knees, lower the heels, rise up. One more in this direction, releve, or come to the balls of your feet, bend your knees, keeping your legs parallel with the equal distance between them the whole time, lower your heels, rise up, now reverse. Bend your knees, rise to the balls of your feet, straighten your legs, and lower. Bend your knees, lift your heels, straighten your legs, lower your heels. Two more, bend your knees, raise your heels to releve, straighten your legs, lower your heels, bend your knees, Raise your heels, straighten your legs, and lower. Whoa! Go ahead and just move your heels so that your heels are together, toes are apart, Pilates feet. Come back out into your T, your second position, where you're going to raise up by squeezing everything towards the midline and lower. Weight should be primarily over your big toe and second toe as you rise up. Keep everything squeezed together. This time I'm inhaling on the way up and exhaling on the way down. Five more. Here's four. Shoulders down. Shake out your neck. Three. Here's two. And one. Go ahead and shake everything out. Release. If you're on anything, please keep down very carefully. If you're not, go ahead and come over to your reformer. That was a variation of footwork. So we will not be doing footwork on the reformer today. We will go straight into an ab warm up. I have two springs on personally. I'm going to roll onto my back. We will be doing curl ups, feet and tabletop. Everything squeezed together strongly. Arms parallel, shoulders plugged into the mat. Let's go ahead and check on our neutral spine. Our sacrum should be flat. All 12 ribs run, but there should be a slight curve or lift between your sacrum and your 12th rib. <sighs> Bring your ribs together. Drop your belly button to your spine. You should have a nice, wide, soft sternum and collarbone. Shake out your neck. We're going to inhale, grip. Exhale, using our lats by spiraling out to their pinky by deck. We're going to draw our hands down our hips. And release back up to the ceiling. As you exhale to bring your arms down to your side, drop your belly button to your spine. On this last one, let's go ahead and make sure that our ribs are still strongly together, not flaring as if they're in a corset. We're going to bring our arms out to a V, no wider than the width of the carriage, spiraling out slightly to our pinky blade edge. How much of this movement can you start from your abdominals? Go ahead. Begin your exhale, dropping your belly button to your spine first, and then moving your arms. One more. Shoulder blades flat and stable on the mat. And back up. Arms up to the T, hovered slightly off the carriage. Go ahead and make sure that you didn't flare your ribs to do this. Spiral out to your pinky blade edge. Exhale to bring your arms into your hips, hands into your hips, release back to the T. Exhale. When you bring the straps back out, don't lose tension on the straps. One more. Exhale, drop your belly down your spine and release. Lose tension this time, coming all the way to the carriage. Shake your knees up from side to side. We are going to do an abdominal series with curl ups with our arms in a T that's going to be a little bit more fast paced. We're going to bring our legs up to tabletop, arms to a T, 
Inhale, exhale, curl up and release. And two. Here's three, four, five, six. Don't curl your tailbone. Seven, eight. Come back in. As we bring our hands to our hips, we're going to extend our legs out to working level. So, inhale. Exhale, extend, and release, and two. Curl up over your sternum. Five. Don't let your sacrum rock. Eight. Leave your legs out at working level. Inhale, exhale, bring your right leg in to your nose. Release everything back down to the working level, arms to your teeth. Exhale, left leg to your nose, release. Right leg to your nose, release. Don't tuck your tailbone. You should still have a flat sacrum, maintaining the slight curve in your lower back. One more on each side. Come into the carriage or the bumper, put your feet on the foot bar and go ahead and rock from side to side. So sorry, I would like to go ahead and correct my rubbers from earlier. We were doing supine arms earlier, not curls before we began the curl up series. That was my mistake. We're ready to come up. Come to the side. You are welcome to do this next part of the routine, which will be the hundreds in the series of five on the carriage with no box. To do that, you would come to the front of your, or the side, the very edge of the side, Go ahead and roll your body back. Bring it forward slightly. And you go ahead and work from here on this side. I am going to be placing my box on the carriage today. And I will be doing my hundreds and series of five on my long box. If you are uncomfortable with that, please feel free to do your exercises on the carriage. If you are uncomfortable with that, Please feel free to do your exercises on the floor. It's important to do our exercises wherever we feel the safest. We will not be doing the hundreds or the series of five with any spring tension. You can leave your spring tension where it is on the lighter setting. We will be using that as feedback. If we're rocking the carriage tomorrow, we're going to use change momentum. Our box and our carriage will slam against the bumper, and we know that we need to um, work on control in those positions. So go ahead and come on to your box or your carriage or the mat. Grab behind your knees, articulate your spine down. Go ahead and adjust from there. We're going to go ahead and begin with the hundreds. So you can rest your head back in a slight back extension. So go ahead and come up when you're ready. Knees and tabletop, curled up, arms over to the ceiling. Inhale over, exhale, begin coming. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale. If you're on the box, you're raised in height, but the, the movement should not be any more difficult. It may feel different because you're on the box, of course, but that's it. For those of you who are doing this on the carriage, you're going to have less space that you're sitting on, so it is going to be more difficult. Regardless, the hundreds are a very difficult move. They never seem to get any easier. On the exhale, one long fluid breath, dropping your belly button to your spine. Go ahead and check in with your neutral spine. Is your sacrum flat? Do you have a slight curve in your lower back? Are your ribs coming together? Are your shoulders away from your ears? Is your neck loose? One more. Bring your knees into your chest. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Kind of do a slight back extension if you're on the box. If you have osteoporosis, osteopenia, or neck issues, please do not come into back extension. Go ahead and rest with your head in your hands. Pressing your head in your hands and your hands into your head. From there, we're going to go ahead and do the series of five. Legs up to tabletop and in a single leg pull. Inhale, exhale. Left hand on the inside of your right knee. Right hand on the outside of your left ankle. Belly button to spine. Inhale, exhale, switch. 
Maintaining a neutral spine. If you find that you're tucking, go ahead and bring your leg only to your tabletop. See if you can deepen your core connection here. Bring your knees in your chest. Come into a back extension and your head and your hands in front of the box. Or if you're on the carriage. Inhale, exhale, curl up. Keeping our knees and table up the whole time, we're going to do the double leg pull. Inhale, extend your arms in front of your ears to the wall behind you, your feet to the wall in front of you. Exhale your arms to a T first, and then bring everything in to tabletop. Inhale, energy shooting out of your fingers and your toes. Exhale. Inhale, see if you can curl deeper over your sternum. No rocking in our sacrum. Dropping your belly under our spine the whole time. Come on. Maintain the level of your curl the entire time. Don't let it drop and lift back up. So stay in your curl. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Next, we'll be doing knee scissors. Inhale, exhale, curl up, legs and tabletop. Bring you up to the ceiling now. Hold on to your right leg. Take your left leg away from you. And give it a little pull. And pull. Your leg will come where it comes. Don't rock your body to grab your leg like this. Keep your body maintaining the curl up. Five. Belly button is fine. Seven and eight. Bring your knees into your chest. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders back. Enjoy the slight back extension. Try not to crank your neck too hard. Head in your hands, curling up. Feet up to the ceiling. We're going to do the double leg, lower left, lower one, two, three. Exhale, watch your belly button drop your spine, and then use your abdominals to lift your leg. Drop one. Two, three, and lift. Drop one, two, three, and lift. Make check in on your ribs. Hopefully they aren't flaring. Can you curl up a little deeper over your sacrum? Make sure you're crunching your chin to your chest. There should be room under your chin for an apple, an orange, an egg. You can help to create this space by pushing your head back into your hands as well as pushing your head, your hands into your head. Let's do one more because I lost count, guys. Sorry about that. Knees in your chest. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. We're going to do elbow to knee. Rotating from our belly button or above. Rotating across our ribs and across our ribs. We're bringing this rib across the other side. We're bringing this side across to the other side. So head in your hands. Hands in your, on your head. Use it to take up. And exhale to curl up. Left leg extended. Right leg bent. Rotate your left elbow to your right knee. Inhale, exhale, switch. Just like in the double leg stretch, we are not losing our curl up at any point in this exercise. We are maintaining our curl the entire time. Here's four. How strongly can you crunch your obliques? Six. Seven. One more on each side. Make sure you're maintaining the space under your chin. Try your knees in your chest. Come back. If you're on the box, go ahead and extend your feet out to the side. Probably going to touch your footboard. That's fine. Extend your arms out to the teeth. Don't let your shoulders creep up by your ears now. Open your heart to the ceiling. Relax and try not to crunch your neck. Bring your hands behind your head and rock up. So, 
We're going to go ahead, come off to the side. We are moving on to swan, and then we are going to do side arms. So, one heavy spring for swan. To safely go, and if you'd like a sticky mat for swan, in case you're wearing some slippy pants or a slippy shirt, it will go across your box, like so. Go ahead and place the hand closest to you on the foot bar. The hand furthest from you on the foot bar. Go ahead and bring your leg up. Place it on the box and swing your other leg up. The box will come to the bottom of your sternum where the 12th mid rib comes up to meet your sternum or for ladies, your bra strap. You're going to squeeze your legs together. Squeeze your seat. Draw your belly button up towards your spine. Bring your ribs together. We're going to push out on one. Draw up as high as you can on two with straight arms, drawing your shoulder blades away from your ears. Push back on three, pull over with wide elbows on four. If you felt it in your low back, draw your belly button up to your spine more strongly. Squeeze your legs together more strongly. And also, if that is sore, please make your movement a little less to protect your back. So we're going to inhale on one. Exhale on two. Inhale back on three. Exhale across on four. So we're going to inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Let's do one more. Try not to break your wrists. Go ahead and come off foot, foot, hand, hand to get off safely off the box. We're going to go ahead and put our sticky mat back. We can go ahead and remove our box. We are going to place one spring, a light spring, if that is an option, onto your former. We are going to come sitting on the side of your former. You'll have to hover your legs slightly or cross your legs. Go ahead and take your strap. I have my strap in my left hand personally. I'm going to draw it in so that my elbow is by my ribs, pointed towards my hip. My ribs are not clearing. My belly button's towards my spine. My shoulder blades are drawn flat on my back. I'd engage my lat here. I'm going to press my arm straight up. I'm going to draw it straight back down. The movement's very tiny. It's as if I'm scraping by the side of my face. There's three. How strongly can you engage your lats here? Four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Go ahead and take your handle, in what it would be my right hand and your opposite hand. Your uh, elbow is going to be by your hip. Your forearm is going to be across your body. You're going to rotate at your bicep, leaving your elbow by your hip to open your arm to the side. And come back. If you have any shoulder issues, please do not do this movement. Any shoulder issues at all. Any shoulder issues at all, please do not do side arms. The first movement that we did um, should be okay for that, but from here on out, let's avoid that. And eight. From here, we're going to bring our arm down a diagonal to our opposite hip, pull it across our body and up a diagonal as if we're unsheathing a sword. Bend at the elbow. Bring your hand across your body. Unsheath your sword with control. Without rocking your body. Remaining stable on both of your hips. Shoulders down your back. There's four. Bringing your ribs together. Pulling your shoulders away from your ear. Having a long neck. One more. And eight. And down. From here, 
from there, we're going to place our hand back in the hand that's closest to the shoulder block again. For me, that's my left hand. We're going to hug the moon. So we're going to bring everything together as if we're holding a giant ball above our head, slightly in front in our periphery, or ballet fifth. Only come back to where you can keep resistance in your spring. Ribs are knit, drawn down. Again, how strongly can you engage your lat here? Can the movement come more from your lat than from anywhere else to move the, the carriage? Two more. Shoulders down your back. Now, go ahead, place that handle on your post. Go ahead and pick up the handle to the back. Hold on to it by putting your hand through and hooking your thumb around to hold on to it. Now, place your other palm on top of those fingers and look back. Exhale, moving your ribs across as we've been doing for elbow to knee. Bringing our ribs across. Moving from the belly button up. Sit straight up, shoulders down, belly button the spine, and eight. Come back, bring the carriage into the bumper, place your handle back on the post. We're going to get off our carriage carefully. We're going to come to the other side. What foot did you have in front on this side? Whichever foot that was, go ahead and switch your foot. So the other foot may be in front on the opposite side. From here, I'm going to pick up the front handle in my right hand, bring it my arm in so that my bicep is squeezing my ribs, my elbow is pointing down towards my hip, my hand is up at my shoulder. I'm going to bring my ribs together, draw my belly up and in, shoulders down my back, long loose neck. I'm going to as if I'm rubbing this out of your face, extend my fingertips for the ceiling and come back down. Here's two. I'm working on engaging my lat here, my tricep. Three. Here's four. Arms straight up to the ceiling. Three more. Seven. Maintain stability in your sits bones. They should both be strongly grounded. And eight. Come into the bumper. I'm taking my left hand, reaching across my body, grabbing the handle. My bicep is squeezed at my side with my elbow and my hip again. My arm is reaching across my body towards my opposite hip. I'm going to hinge, opening up, still squeezing my bicep to my ribs, and bring my arm back across my body. I'm going to swing it across my body as if I'm opening a door or window and come back across for two. Three, drawing my belly button towards my spine. Shoulders down, wide collarbone. Bringing my ribs together. I shouldn't have any tension in my legs. I'm not working there. And eight. Come back, reach your arm across your body, a diagonal towards your opposite hip. For me, my left hand's reaching for my right hip. I'm going to bend at my elbow as if I'm unsheathing a sword and extend my arm on the diagonal. Then I'm going to bend at my elbow, bringing my hand across my body and bring it back down towards my opposite hip. Coming across my body, extending at the elbow, bending at my elbow, coming across. Let's check in with our shoulders. The arm that's working, your shoulders should be drawing strongly down your back, far away from your ear. You should shake out your neck. Shouldn't affect your movement. On this one, draw your belly button in. Let's 
let's do two more. The movement shouldn't be choppy but fluid. How fluid can you make this last movement? And in. From there, we're going to hug the moon. Come so that you still have some tension in your chest. Squeeze your lats to bring your shoulders down your back and open back up with control. And squeeze. And here's three. On the exhale, as you bring your fingertips up towards each other, think of knitting your ribs or bringing them together even more strongly. Bring your ribs together, draw your belly button to your spine. Bring your ribs together, draw your shoulders away from your ear, drop your belly button. And this one, go ahead and release the tension out of your neck. Check on your sit bones, make sure they're stable. One more. And now, drawing our ribs across our body like we did for elbow to knee, we're going to reach to the back post, pick up our handle. We're going to hold the handle so our fingers are through it, our, our thumb is hooking over. We're going to take our free hand, or the foot bar hand, for me that's my left hand, place my fingertips on front. Rotate to the back, across my ribs from the belly button up. Inhale, rotating my spine, and exhale, coming back across. Your fingertips should remain in front of your sternum for the entire rotation. They should not leave. Your sternum or your ribs are leading this movement. If you feel your shoulders creeping up, place your hands where you placed your sternum on the long box for swan, right where the 12th rib meets the bottom of your sternum, or for ladies, your bra strap. Let's do two more. Draw your belly button to your spine. On this one, draw your belly button to your spine and bring your ribs together strongly as if you're wearing a corset. Go ahead and come in carefully. Place your handle back on. We are going to go ahead and move in to chest expansion and thigh stretch. So I'm going to have two springs on. I'm going to carefully get on to my reformer. My knees are going to be under my hips. My toes are going to be holding on to the edge of the reformer. I'm going to be squeezing my glutes, drawing my belly button up and in, bringing my ribs together. I'm going to place my hands in my handles with my palms facing the foot bar. I'm going to pull my arms back, squeeze my blades. I'm going to look to the right, center to the left, center, and release my arms forward. Not releasing the squeeze on my glutes. Pull my arms back, look left, center, right, center, release. Pull back, squeeze the arms, pulling your shoulders away from your ears. Look right, center, left, draw your belly button to your spine and release. Pull back, look left, center, right, center, release. One more set, squeeze your glutes strongly to push your hips forward. It's as if you're between two planes of glass. Well, your body at least, not your arms. Pull back. Look left, center, right, center, and release. Go ahead and release your glutes back to your legs to give yourself a break. You're going to slide our knees up to the shoulder blocks so our knees are connected with the shoulder blocks. On thigh stretch, your feet can be coming directly out of your knees or you can squeeze your heels together, engage your inner thighs, Press your glute, your hips forward by squeezing your glutes. It's as if your body is between two panes of glass. Take your handles, put them on your wrists as if they're bracelets. Reach up, grab the plastic part of your strap or right above the middle. Drop your shoulders back and down. Exhale to lean back, drawing your ribs in, and then exhale to come up. Inhale, the 
Nice and slide stretch. Drop your shoulders. One more. And sit back on your heels. Release the straps from your hands. Place them on the posts. Walk your hands out to a child's pose. And take a couple of deep breaths here. If you felt that strongly in your quads on thigh stretch, that is most likely where you will feel it. Um, it's called thigh stretch, but it's more like a thigh workout, right? <laughs> Go ahead and walk your hands back in. We are going to go ahead and move on to side lion legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to change out our hand straps for our foot straps. If you have a double loop strap, obviously you won't be doing much of anything. For the ball, you can place the ball in your headrest here for additional support. So I'm going to change my springs to one spring. I use one heavy spring. Um, that's one medium spring. It's also great if you don't have an option. Just one spring. Go ahead, lie down. Reach around with your hand. Grab onto the post or your shoulder block. Shoulders under you. The box of your body is lined up as if you were doing side lying legs on the mat. Your bottom leg will be lifted slightly. I like mine bent for this. You can straighten it if you like. It, um, you have to leave it lifted the whole time. I'm going to be doing it with a bent leg today. I am going to press out with my bottom leg, place my top foot in the strap. I'm going to straighten my top foot, bring my bottom foot in and bend it. Adjust my body very carefully. I'm going to make my foot parallel, gentle point. I'm going to bring my foot forward, bend my knee, kicking my glute, and straighten my leg straight out of my hip. Bring it forward, belly button to spine, don't tuck. Bend your knee and straighten. Your hand may go on top of your shoulder block. You can go on top of your hip to make sure that you aren't rocking your hips. Make sure that you have a lift in your side, just like doing sideline legs on the mat. So we're not sinking into our side. The strap will rotate, rock a little funny on your leg. One more. Go ahead and bend your knee, kicking your glute, straighten your foot and pull with your hamstring and glute to bring your leg straight out. Bend, straighten. This is just bicycle in parallel. Bend, straighten. Belly button is fine. Check on your ribs, bring them together. Shoulders down, check on the backs of your body. Your shoulders and hips should be lined up with each other on the box. Leave this is five. Straighten, six, bend your knee, straighten your knee, pull with your glute and hamstring, seven, and one more, and eight. Staying right here, leaving our, hip, our leg at hip height, we're going to bring our leg forward and squeeze your glute and hamstring to pull it back to that position, coming straight out of our hip. Make sure that you still have a slight gap in your side. Here's four. Five. Six, make sure you're not tucking. Seven. One more, and eight. Go ahead and turn your foot out. We are going to bring our foot up to the ceiling, bending our leg and straightening our leg back out. So bicycle in a turnout or Pilates, half Pilates V position. Straight up, pardon me. Don't lose the gap 
If you come up and you drop, only come up to where you can maintain the lift in your side. Here's five. Six. Seven. Make sure that you're not twisting back. You want to maintain the box of your body. Go ahead and reverse. Bend your knee. Straighten it. Pull your leg down your gluten hamstring. Bend your knee. Straighten. You should be feeling this by now. Here's three. Squeeze. Here's four. Yeah. Here's five. Six. Seven. And eight. Now we're going to bring our legs straight up to the ceiling and squeeze it back down. Again, only come up as far as you can while maintaining the gap in your side. Three. Here's four. We're going to stretch after this. Five, I promise. Six. Seven. One more, guys. Here is eight. Go ahead and bend your knee, reaching your foot to the foot bar. Take your foot carefully out of the strap. Place your strap back on the post. Put your ball for a second. Still hold on to it because we're going to need it in just a second, right? Go ahead and take that top foot across your, your bottom leg knee. So for me, my right leg, which was my top leg, will come across my left knee, which I have bent. My foot or my arch is on the foot bar. I cross my uh, leg across my knee, above my ankle, below my calf. From there, I'm going to reach back and hold on, try to release my hip flexor. Place the ball wherever you can and not lose it. We're going to stay here for a minute because <laughs> that was really hard. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to go ahead and release our legs. Shake them out from side to side. Ooh. Go ahead and release anything that we have going on in there. One side is always easier than the other side. I hope for you that this side is your easier side because now you know what's coming. So, go ahead, place your ball or pillow, yoga block, or nothing, into your headrest. Go ahead and come lying onto your side. Reach around, grab on your post or shoulder block. Set up the box of your body with your bottom leg. Go ahead and push out on the foot bar. Take the foot strap in front of you to your top foot, straighten your leg, go ahead and bend your leg underneath, finding your position for sideline legs. So with our foot parallel, we're gonna bring our foot front, bend our knee to kick our heel to our glute, and straighten our leg. Bring your foot out, bend your knee, and straighten. Here's three. Drop your belly button to your spine. Again, your hand can be on your waist, where it will be out of the way of the strap, or it can be on top of the shoulder block, which a lot of people enjoy because it helps them rock forward slightly to stay off of their sciatica. Let's do two more. If you rock back on your sciatica and you already have sciatica issues, it will bother your sciatica. Go ahead and bend to kick your heel to your glute, straighten your leg, and use your hamstring to pull your foot. So it's coming directly out of your sit bone. Bend, straighten your leg in front of you, and squeeze to draw it down. Bend, straighten your leg. Here's three. Don't allow your foot to pronate or rotate and work. It's four. Ooh, my strap went funny, sorry about that. Here's six. Seven. And eight. And from here, we're going to kick our foot forward and squeeze our glutes and hamstrings and pull it back to standing, basically. So press forward and pull back. Here's three. Squeezing from right here where your glute 
meet your leg. Call it, some people call it your smile leg. Make sure that you're not sinking into the mat. Seven. And eight. We're going to go ahead and turn out our foot to a half Pilates V position. We are going to kick our foot up to the ceiling without losing the gap. Bend our knee in and straighten our foot back to standing. Kick up to the ceiling, bend and straighten. Kick up, but when you feel yourself start to lose the space, stop there, that's your edge. Place your feet back on the foot bar, coming out of that stretch safely and carefully with control. Go ahead and rock your knees from side to side, lifting your hip, trying to keep your ribs on. We're going to go ahead and come up to the seat, rotate your legs to the side. We're going to put two springs on, two heavy springs for me personally, uh, or you can do four springs. Whatever your foot, footwork springs are, which is normally two to three, but if you're feeling a little spin after the sideline legs and you'd like just to, please feel free. This will be more of a calf stretch, just the calf stretch, stretch portion of the uh, footwork series, trotting and bottom lift. Go ahead and come back to line. Come on to your back. Squeeze your legs together, ankles, knees, and toes. Come into a forced arch position on the balls of your feet. Press out. We are going to drop our left heel under, bending our right knee over the foot bar. Go ahead and maintain a neutral spine position here. Go ahead and lift both heels together. When both heels are lifted, then drop your right heel, bending your left knee. Your hips should not uh, rock or rotate, and your sacrum should not rock back and forth. Go ahead and lift. Now drop your left heel. As opposed to an ankle strengthening exercise, it still is. We are using it at this time after the sideline legs as more of a calf Achilles tendon stretch. Lift, 
lower left. We're going to speed it up slightly. Our sacrum, the area from our uh, pelvic bone or our tailbone to both of our hips should be flat. We should have a slight curve in our lower back. Our ribs should be on. We're bringing our ribs together. Let's do two more sets. Shoulders away from the ears. Wide collarbone. Shoulder blades flat forming onto the mat. Go ahead and raise both heels up to center. Squeeze your legs together. Lower both heels under and raise them up. We're going to lower. Two, three, four, and raise. Two, three, four. Sacrum flat. Neutral spine. Four. Here's this five. Six. Seven. And eight. And nine. On ten, stay under. Now bend your knees, tracking your legs over your big toes. Still squeezing everything in your legs towards the midline or the center or together. Go ahead. Swing your legs to the side. Come off to the side of the carriage. I'm going to be right here so that you can see me. I have my feet in a wide stance, wider than my hips. My feet are turned out so that my heels are closer together. My toes are further apart in a wide Pilates feet. I'm going to bend my knees so that my knees are tracking over my big toes. I'm rotating my hips up by rotating my hip socket, my femur bone in my hip socket. My arms are going to come out to a T in my periphery, so in front of my body a little bit, palms up to slow grip, inhale, exhale, bend over towards my right side, not crunching, but reaching, and come up, bending towards my left side, reaching on both sides, make sure your ribs are flaring, Make sure that your knees are tracking over your big toes, squeezing your glutes to assist your knees in turning up. One more to the left. Stand up, shake it up. I hope that you enjoyed the lesson today and thank you guys so much for joining me.